Welcome to Sunday School for March 20th, 2022. For ages 18 to 24, I do not own the rights to this music. Please have your Bibles ready and turn to John chapter 2, verse 1. Please also have pen and paper ready to write down the notable scriptures and the, answer the questions and to write down the daily home Bible readings for study later. The topic is the wedding at Cana. Today's Bible basis is coming out of John chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. The Bible truth says, Jesus always gives the best to us. The memory verse says, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. And that's John chapter 2 verse 11. The lesson aim says, by the end of this lesson, we will discuss Jesus' response to Mary. Reflect on Jesus' transforming power in our lives and share with others why the power of Jesus is necessary in our lives. This is the audio version of Sunday School Only. Our lesson scripture, beginning at John chapter 2, verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana, of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, and his brethren, and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. Biblical definitions for today's lesson Firkins and purifying. Firkins, a measure of capacity for liquids. Each firkin equals about 10 gallons. Purifying, the process of ritual cleansing, either legal or ceremonial, to purge from the pollution of sin and guilt. Light on the Word God has drawn a veil over most of Jesus' life before he began his public ministry. Both Matthew and Luke record Jesus' birth some of the incidents surrounding his birth and early childhood. Notable scriptures to write down. Matthew 1, verse 18, ending at Matthew chapter 2, verse 23. And Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 40. The next and last glimpse we get of our Lord before his ministry is the preteen Jesus visiting the temple in Jerusalem. Notable scripture, Luke 2, verses 41 to 52. There has been a great deal of speculation about the next 18 years of Jesus' life, but scripture does not reveal anything about those years. The introduction says, John is honored by Jesus. Around A.D. 27, John the Baptist explodes out of the Judean wilderness proclaiming the advent of the Messiah and the arrival of the kingdom of God. 
One day, as John is baptizing along the Jordan River, Jesus shows up. He presents himself to John for baptism. Notable scripture, Matthew 3, verse 13. John realizes who Jesus is and tries to decline the honor, but Jesus convinces him that this is all part of God's plan, and John baptizes him. As Jesus makes his way out of the water, the heavens open and the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus in the form of a dove. Then the voice of God calls out from heaven, This is my beloved Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Notable Scripture, Matthew 3, verse 17. Lesson point one, the merry occasion. John chapter two, verses one through five of our lesson text in review. Jewish wedding celebrations often lasted an entire week. The bridegroom's family had the sacred responsibility of providing food and beverages for all their guests for as long as the celebration lasted. In the midst of this celebration, the unthinkable happened. The wine ran out. This was a matter of grave concern. It would be considered an insult to all those present and cause the family to become socially marginalized. Mary realized that the situation was desperate and immediately turned to Jesus for help. Weddings were major events in those days in small villages such as Cana, where the people worked hard without much time for recreation. Weddings were even more special. The entire village may have participated in the celebration of the couple's union. The actual wedding usually took place on a Wednesday if the bride was a virgin and on Thursday if she was a widow. The phrase, the third day, in verse 1, refers to the, to the succession of incidents recorded in John 1, verses 29 and verse 35. The series of events began with the celebration at the home of the bride. The bridal party escorted the maiden from her parents. The bridal party escorted the maiden from her parents' home and then to the home prepared for her by her husband. As the wedding party made its way through the streets, neighbors and townspeople saluted the bride. Many people joined the entourage until it grew into a parade. When the procession arrived at the bride's new home, the couple exchanged vows. Then the bride and groom were crowned with garlands and the legal marriage document was signed. After the prescribed washing of hands and prayers, the marriage supper began with the cups being filled. Marriage is the very first institution established by God. Notable scripture, Genesis 2 verse 24. The Old Testament repeatedly portrays the intimate relationship between God and Israel as a marriage. Notable scriptures, Isaiah 62, verse 5, Jeremiah 3, verse 14, Hosea chapter 1, verse 2, and Hosea 3, verse 1. In the New Testament, Christ is often referred to as the bridegroom. Notable scripture, Matthew 9, verse 15, John chapter 3, verse 29. The Apostle Paul portrays the relationship between Christ and his church as that of a husband and wife. Notable scriptures, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2 and Ephesians 5 verses 25 to 27. The gathering of Christ and his church in heaven at the end of the age is described as a wedding supper. Notable scripture, Revelation 19 verse 9. When we consider the high esteem God has for marriage, it is highly appropriate that Christ would inaugurate the messianic age with a sign at a wedding. Question 1. Who was with Jesus at the wedding? Make sure to write down your answers. 
light on the word. Mary's urgent request that Jesus do something does not necessarily indicate she expected a miracle. Her husband Joseph, who was not mentioned again after the temple incident, had probably been dead for a long time. Notable scripture, Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 51. Lesson point two, Mary turns to Jesus for help. John chapter 2, verses 3 through 5 of our lesson text in review. Over the years, Mary had become accustomed to depending on her eldest son in emergencies, and this situation certainly qualified as an emergency. Mary's absolute confidence in Jesus implies that he had seldom disappointed her. Our Lord's response to his mother seems flippant on the face of it, but Jesus is not being callous or disrespectful. The term woman was one of endearment. Notable scripture, John chapter 2, verse 4. Jesus used the same word when he lovingly entrusted his mother to John's care. From the cross, woman, behold thy son. Notable scripture, John chapter 19, verse 26. It is probably better translated as dear woman. When the Lord inquires of his mother, why do you involve me? It marks the turning point in his relationship with her and his family. From that moment on, the business of his father would take precedence over the concern of his mother. Notable scripture, Luke chapter 2, verses 49 through 51. The phrase, my time has not yet come, is an idea that will be repeated throughout John's narrative. Notable scriptures, John chapter 4, verse 21, verse 23, and then John chapter 5, verse 25, and then John chapter 7, verse 30. Jesus lived his earthly life according to a heavenly clock. His time on earth was always in his Father's hands. The hour Jesus refers to is the final hour of his earthly ministry when he would be manifested as the Christ and share in the glory of God. Notable scripture, John 17, verse 1. Question 2. What is Jesus' response to his mother's request for his assistance? Please write down your answers. Light on the word, Mary believed in Jesus. Mary may or may not have understood what Jesus meant by his response, but she trusted him to do what was right. She understood that Jesus was much more than just her son. He was the son of God. So the mother humbly submitted herself to the son and instructed the servants, do whatever he tells you. Notable scripture, John chapter 2, verse 5. Lesson point three. The Miraculous Occurrence John chapter 2 verses 6 through 11 of our lesson text in review. Outside the reception room were six large stone pots that contained water used for the ceremonial cleansing of hands. According to Jewish tradition, the primary sources of impurity were contact with dead creatures of any kind genital flows and certain skin diseases. Notable scripture, Leviticus 11. Any impure object or person gave off a secondary degree of impurity to whatever or whomever it came into contact with. Since ultimately everything touches everything else, maintaining ritual purity was a continual battle. Therefore, Whenever new guests arrive at a wedding feast, water from the pots is poured over their hands in a cleansing ritual. Eating with unclean hands was also considered defilement, so water was poured over the hands of the diners before each meal. Each of the water pots 
had a capacity of two or three firkins of water. A firkin is about 10 gallons, so each pot held about 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus commands the servants to fill all the pots with water, and they obediently filled each pot to the brim. Filling the pots to the brim eliminates the possibility of anything else being added to the pots other than water. Next, Jesus tells the servants to take out some of the wine that is in the pot and give it to the master of the banquet. Again, the servants do as they are instructed. John does not explain how or when the water in the pots becomes wine. Both the bridegroom and the banquet master were at a loss to explain the source of the new wine, but the servants knew. Traditionally, good wine was wine that had not lost its sugar content in the fermentation process. Cheaper fermented wine had to be diluted with much more water to ensure that the revelers did not violate the law against drunkenness. Notable scriptures, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 20 to 21, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 7. In either case, Jewish law mandated mixing all wine with water. The mixture ranged from three to 10 parts, water to one part wine. The ratio of water to wine depended on the amount of alcohol in the wine. The phrase, when men have well drunk, means become drunk or become satisfied. The phrase must be translated according to its context. In this case, it is illogical to think that Jesus contributed gallons of wine to an already drunken party. Our Lord is no mere magician performing magical feats to impress the crowds. He is the Son of God. He effects miracles to help his people and glorify his Father. The significance of Jesus' first miracle lies in the result produced. He transforms what would have been a disaster for the host into a joyous and praiseful moment. Question 3. The phrase, when men have well drunk, means what? Write down your answers. Light on the word, the new age of grace. The supernatural event portrayed the opening of the new age of grace through the new wine of the gospel and manifested Jesus' glory as the Son of God. The miracle caused Jesus' disciples to put their faith in him. Lesson point four, the move to Capernaum. John chapter two of our lesson text in review. John chapter two, verse 12 of our lesson text in review. The belief prompted by the sign was not the complete faith Jesus desired, but it was a step above the disciples' initial belief, which was only conjectural. The disciples had seen the miracle with their own eyes and were able to draw their own conclusions that a superior being was in their midst. Jesus provided all his claims through his acts of mercy and power. Jesus did not stay around to receive public acclaim for this miracle. Instead, he moved on to Capernaum, which was his headquarters for most of his ministry. Question 4. Who left the wedding with Jesus? Light on the word. Divine acts of love and power. Miracles are not merely superhuman feats. They are divine acts of love and power. John refers to Jesus' miracles as signs. These signs always point past the event to the source of the event, Jesus Christ. The signs are recorded so that we may believe in the power and person of Jesus Christ and attain eternal life by believing. Notable Scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. The Bible application says that your students will discover ways to make a positive difference. 
The gospel of Christ changes people from the inside out. Can you think of any ways God has changed you? This week, make a list of sinful ways or imperfections that God has changed in you. Then make a second list of sinful ways or imperfections you want God to change in you. Be prepared to share with your family. Make your second list a matter of prayer and determine to use God's power in you to bring about change. Students' responses. The aim says that your students will learn about the miracles that only God can do. Eddie's love of the party life was getting out of hand. He reached a critical point one day when he left work for lunch and returned to the office drunk. He was fired on the spot. When Eddie finally went home, his wife told him that their marriage was over. Walking the streets with no job, no home, and no family, Eddie knew his life had hit rock bottom. He looked up to the sky and cried out, Dear God, please help me. After a while, Eddie passed a little storefront church and something inside him compelled him to go in. The pastor made his way to Eddie and sat down with him. Eddie broke down and tearfully poured out the whole sad story. The pastor told Eddie that in spite of all the mistakes he had made, God still loved him. That day, Eddie accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior, and from that moment on, he never took another drink. Within a month, he found a new job. A short time later, he and his wife were reunited. Eddie told his wife that he was sure God performed a miracle in his life. He said, he changed my life from hopelessness to happiness and our marriage from failure to fantastic. If Jesus can change me, surely he can change anything. Lord, your love, your miracles, and your awesomeness are truly blessings to us. Thank you for your miracles and help us not to take them for granted, but to share your love and mercy with others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Dig a little deeper. The seven signs of John's gospel. The key verse for unpacking this gospel is located in John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The key word is signs, which is the term that John uses to refer to the miracles of Jesus. He uses this term because these miracles point away from themselves to Jesus, the miracle worker. These miracles give Jesus the opportunity to speak about his ministry and himself as the I am. Notable scripture, Exodus 3, verse 14. For example, after he feeds the multitude, Jesus talks about himself as the bread of life. Notable scripture, John chapter 6, verse 35. And just before he opens the eyes of the man who was born blind, Jesus identifies himself as the light of the world. Notable scripture, John chapter 9, verse 5. Unlike the other Gospels that record innumerable miracles of Jesus, John chose to record only seven, four of which are unique to John. These signs are changing water into wine, found in chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, healing the official son, found in John chapter 4, verses 46 to 54, and healing the Healing the paralytic, John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. Feeding the multitude, John chapter 6, verses 5 through 13. The only miracles recorded in all four Gospels. Walking on water, John 6, verses 16 through 21. Healing the man born blind, John 9, verses 1 through 7. Raising Lazarus from the dead, John 11, verses 1 through 44. 
John admits that it would be impossible to record everything that Jesus did. Notable scripture, John chapter 21, verse 25. However, he has selected these seven miracles for the express purpose of getting them to believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah. Notable scripture, John chapter 2, verse 11, John 4, verse 48, verse 54, John 11, verse 45, and then verses 47 to 48. The result of trusting in Jesus is eternal life. Daily Home Bible Readings On Monday, the topic is Glorify Your Son. Read John chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. Tuesday, the topic is Glory That Comes From God. Read John chapter 5, verses 39 to 47. Wednesday, the topic is Glory That Belongs to God. Read John chapter 7, verses 10 through 18. Thursday, the topic is God Glorifies the Son. Read John chapter 8, verses 48 to 59. Friday, the topic is Loving Human Glory. Read John chapter 12, verses 36 to 43. Saturday, the topic is Glory for the Sake of Unity. Read John 17, verses 20 to 24. And Sunday, the topic is Glory Revealed. Read John chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.